Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and this tutorial is the first of several in a series dealing with using color in Adobe Illustrator. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about the various kinds of color that we have access to, show you when to use them, and how you can modify them to get different colors. In future tutorials, we'll be looking at how we can add colors using the Blend tool, using the Eyedropper tool, accessing our hidden libraries, and even Adobe online color website to find color themes and the latest trends in color and so much more. To get started, I'll click on an object on the artboard and that allows me to come over to the properties panel and see the color fill icon which represents the color of the object that I have selected and the stroke color icon which represents the stroke of this object. Now in this video, I'm only going to be talking about color fill, but everything I teach you is going to apply to the colors for strokes as well. Now to access the swatches panel, I click on this icon and the swatches panel opens up. And the first thing that I notice is how small my thumbnails are. I want to change that, so I'll come up to the top right corner and click on this icon and come down and choose large thumbnail view. And now the thumbnails are a lot larger and easier to work with. Well, the orange of the object that is selected on the artboard is highlighted here, and if I wanna change the color, all I do is click on a different thumbnail. And as I do, Illustrator applies that new color fill to the object. But if all I wanna do is simply tweak the orange color, I can double click it, and that opens up the Swatch Options dialog box. And we have a lot of different choices here, so let's go over each one of them. First of all, we have the swatch name, and I can actually give my colors any names that I want, but if I leave the default setting, then I'm going to end up with the color values of the color mode. So in this instance, I have the CMYK colors 0, 50, 100, 0 for the color name. Next, I have the color type, and this particular orange is a process color, which is the most popular color type that there is. And in the swatches panel, we see the process color as a square completely filled with the color. Now there is one other color type, and to access that, I'll click on the little pull-down menu, and we see spot color. But I'm not going to change this orange to a spot color, because the only time you ever want to use a spot color is when you need the printer to create a special tray during the printing process. Now the spot color looks different in the swatches panel than the process color. It is a square filled with the color, but in the bottom right corner, you have this little white triangle that has a spot in it. Now, if you end up having a spot color in a project that goes to a printer, you're probably going to get a call and they're going to tell you to change the spot colors to process colors. And that may sound intimidating, but it's really not. Let me close this out and we're going to come over to the swatches panel. Now, every color that you have in your project is going to have a thumbnail. And so you come through and you look for any of the thumbnails that have the little triangle with the spot in the bottom. It's got to have a spot. And double click on that color, come over to the swatches panel when it opens up, and in this color type, click on the pull down menu and change this to process color and say OK. Now the spot is gone and the problem is solved. Next, we need to decide whether we want our color to be global or not. I'm going to select this yellow square because I've applied a global setting to its color as well as to the color of these six smaller squares. I'll come over here and open the swatches panel and then we'll double click to open up the swatch options dialog box and you can see the little check box next to the word global right underneath the color type. That's where I turned the global setting on. First of all, notice that its thumbnail is a little different than the process color and the spot color. It does have the square of color, and it even has this little white triangle in the bottom right corner. But there's not a spot here, so this color isn't going to be a problem going to the printer. So what is a global color? 
Well, the global setting of a color has actually nothing to do with how that color appears on your artboard and everything to do with how Illustrator treats it when it's in your project. What that means is if I have several objects that all have the same global color applied to them and I edit the color on one of those objects, Illustrator is going to edit the color on all of the objects globally at the same time. Now let me show you how that works. I'll go back over to the Swatch Options dialog box and drag these sliders around and change the global color a little bit. And when I find a color I like, I'll come down and click on Preview. And not only is the color changed on the object I have selected, but it's changed on all of the objects on the artboard that had that same global color applied, and it's even changed in the swatches panel. Now we do see the active color is still that first color, the yellow, but once I come over and say OK, then that color is changed everywhere. Now I don't want to lose my yellow, so I'm going to undo that move, keyboard shortcut, command Z, and Command Z. All right, I'm going to open up the swatches panel and double click once again to get back to our dialog box. And now let's talk about color mode. Well, the color mode is determined by what you're working on your project for. In this particular instance, I have my document set up to print. So I'm using the color mode CMYK. If I was working on a project for the web or for a video, then I'd come over to the little pull down menu and I would choose RGB. Or if if I knew that my project was going to be printed in a black and white publication, I might choose grayscale. I'm just going to leave the CMYK setting here, but what if I'm working on a project that I need for both printing and for the web? Well, you can actually do both. Let me close this out and I'll show you how. First of all, I'll work on my project in the CMYK color mode. And when I have it all finished, I'm going to save it and it'll automatically save in whatever format I created it in. Then I can come up to file and down to document color mode. And instead of CMYK color, I can switch this to RGB color. And once I do that, then I can come in and save as, and I'll save it as another format and I'll end up with two documents, one of them for print and one of them for the web. Now let's talk about the fun stuff, how we can create colors and how we can modify colors. Now be sure before you start changing colors that you don't have an object selected on the artboard that you don't want to change. Because if I had an object selected on the artboard and I went in and created a new color, that color is going to then be applied to whatever object I have selected. So I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to actually create a little rectangle here with the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M. And and then I'll come over to the left toolbar and I'm going to click on this color fill icon and that's going to open up the color picker. Here I can move the color stop around on the gradient area or I can use the slider along this hue bar and you can see the colors changing from the green I started with to a new color here on top and also the reference numbers for these colors change as I move my sliders. Now when I have a color that I want all I need to do is say OK, and here's my new color. I see it on the left toolbar, I see it on the object, and I see it here as the color fill icon. But when I click to open the swatches panel, I only see it as the active color, and it has not been added to the swatches panel. The only way that's going to happen is if I come down to the bottom bar here and click on the new swatch icon, this is going to open up the new swatch dialog box, which is almost identical to the swatch options dialog box. All I need to do here is say OK, and now the color has been added to the swatches panel. Now instead of starting with the color picker, I could have come over to the swatches panel and clicked on this new swatch icon to begin with. When I click here and I open up the new swatch dialog box, I can actually use these sliders and change the color that way. And when I have the color that I want, click OK and Illustrator has added the color here to the swatches panel. 
but there are even more ways where I can change the color. I can come up here in the swatches panel and choose the color mixer and this gives me a whole spectrum of colors that I can click on with the eyedropper tool and as I click you can see the changes that are being made and if I find a color that I like I come up to the icon in the top right corner and come all the way down to the bottom and choose create new swatch say OK and then when we look in the swatches panel that color has been added as well. Now in addition to mixing colors we can change the saturation and the brightness of colors and keep them in the same color family and let me show you how to do that. I'm going to click on the artboard to close the swatches panel and then I'll select this center rectangle here. We'll come back and open the swatches panel. I'll double click on the thumbnail and over here in the color mode, I'm going to get this pull down menu and change this to HSB. Now HSB stands for Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. I'm not going to change the Hue slider because that'll give me a bunch of different colors. What I want to do is change the saturation, which is the intensity of the color, and the brightness, which is how light or dark the color is. And those will make subtle changes, but keep in this same green family. So first we're going to reduce the saturation a little bit, and then we're going to increase the brightness. And then I'll check preview, and we can see what change has been made. And I'm going to say OK. Now for this second rectangle, I want to start where I left off here. So I'll select this rectangle, get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and grab that color from the center rectangle. And then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and come back over and open the swatches panel double click on that color and we're going to make the changes again but notice that the color mode is switched back to CMYK and that's because the HSB is only a temporary change and Illustrator is going to automatically revert back to the color mode that your document is set up for. So I'm going to go back to HSB and let's make a couple of more changes. I'll reduce the saturation a little bit more and I'll increase the brightness a little bit more. Let's check the preview to see what it looks like and I think that's going to work just fine so I'm going to say OK. Now I've ended up with three colors that are in the same family but they're a little different and I'm going to be able to use these for shadowing or for highlighting. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. You've learned the difference between the process, the spot, and the global colors and when to use each one of these. And then on a fun note, you've learned how you can modify the colors that you already have at your fingertips. In the next color tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to quickly and simply add a lot of different colors to your artboard using the blend tool. Be sure and subscribe to my channel right now and click that notification bell so that you don't miss that tutorial or any of my future ones. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.